So first, some apologies. I'm going to be going through this in a little bit more detail than normal because I had a bunch of feedback from the last video where people wanted to know more detail about how the heck it was we were using GTP. First, two apologies. One is this is going to take a bit longer to go through because in my last video, which I did in two minutes, people said, gosh, I'd like to know an awful lot more detail about how you use GPT to use OKRs and execute strategy. So I'm going to go in a bit more detail. And secondly, I'm still going to um, be hiding a few things like there's a bunch of proprietary technology we're using and approaches. I don't really want to share those. If you want access to those, give me an email, give me a call. I'll give you the detail. So here's how the story goes. Um, and again, this is a summary, you know, overall to, you know, execute that strategy development and execution cycle through GDP, a bunch of things you got to do. One is, in addition to whatever chat GPT or whatever GPT is you want to use, you need to set up your own data set, your own organization chart, etc. Then we need to figure out your nexus. How do all these things fit together? From there, what is the right GPT to use? And then finally, get that tool set. So set the parameters and then use the tool set. And that ends up sort of connecting those elements so you can then do the right prompt. And many times if you, you know, go to the internet, it just tells you how to set up prompts. But if you don't have this stuff on the left done, it doesn't matter how good your, your prompts are. You're not going to get what you're looking for. Never has garbage in, garbage out been more true. From there, once you run any GPT, it only gives you a, a generic answer. You then have to do your own analysis. And that analysis is going to feed back to every element. And then you get to cycle it through. So typically, you have to cycle this thing through about six times before you get the precision that you would like to get. Now, the good news is that six times will take you 10 minutes, as opposed to, you know, 10 weeks, but it is an iterative process. So I'm now going to go through each step in a bit more detail. So step one, your data set. So the issue is, if we think about the strategy development and strategy execution as a process, step one leads to step two leads to step three. And here's an example of it. Now, you could add 20 more steps or simplify it down to three, but you get the idea. There's a bunch of steps. And then there's a second level, like each one of these triggers other things that are common elements. And so if I were to pick on a couple, once you develop your strategy, yes, I can use that to set my OKRs, but I can also use it to have better linkage to financial planning. Or once I do performance monitoring, I can begin to understand what the impact of what social media is saying about our organization, etc. So you need to decide what level of detail you need. And that data set, we then need to take the second step is based on that data set, what's the nexus? What's the organizing function behind that? So in this example, let's say we're doing performance monitoring. Well, you could have a performance monitoring issue that would lead you to just send notifications to people involved. Or maybe it's a bigger issue and you need to send and execute a meeting with a cross-functional team on a special basis. Or maybe what you've observed could be significant enough that I need to change my strategic direction, my strategy, my targets cascaded. And so the issue is there's a whole bunch of these linkages which exist. And the map of those linkages, we at PM Squared call it the nexus. That becomes the, the connection structure. And we need to capture that. And that allows us to build a model like this. So this particular client wanted us to understand the relationship between the seniority of decision makers, the region that they're operating in, the delivery mechanism, and overall ownership. And so this chart allows us to find out around those questions and what we determined is the most influential elements are manager in the West Coast focused on products and as an interdisciplinary execution. And so this nexus shows a connection between each of those elements. And again, that's not in chat GPT. If you don't build this uniquely for your organization, you'll never get the level of analysis or assessment that you're looking for. Next, you got to set the GPT parameters. And the idea is, um, there's, I'll give you an example. So one parameter is temperature. Temperature is 
actually what you and I would call randomness. You can set the temperature of any investigation and that allows you to figure out how random or how precise you want the result to be. And at the end of the day, we end up writing these scripts that go through a, a lot of detail uh, on how it is we execute this in order to make sure that GDP is giving us the answer we're looking for. Then finally, we need to figure out what's the right tool set. Remember what I said before, that, that tool set becomes a connective mechanism that if you choose the right tool, it will correctly get your parameters. It will correctly take into account your nexus, correctly take into account your data set. And this is a bit like choosing a golf club, that uh, there are countless GPTs to choose from. Currently, with our client base, we're looking at about 100 plus different GPTs. And it's about choosing the right one that's going to give us the best answer, given those constraints that we put in place. So from there, we can then do the prompt. Now, there's a bazillion blogs about prompts because for most uses, I'm trying to write a new uh, blog post, I'm trying to you know, create a new article, you just have to get the prompts because chat has all these elements uh, on the left in it. Uh, in our case, uh, we need to be very careful on how we construct a prompt. Now, we use an index of 120 different contexts uh, for those prompts, but a prompt looks something like this, that uh, in this, in a, in a simple example. Now, I've highlighted uh, different elements in order for you to understand it, but I'd put it in as a concatenated sentence, right? Assess the performance of my objective. In the format, what's the analysis I want? I, as you know, if you watch my videos, I like what, so what, now what? One sentence, no additional data. Tone, business professional, uh, flesh 12 is how uh, Bozo's, uh, Bezos writes, uh, um, you know, it's, uh, if you had a grade 12 education, you'd understand it. Um, act as the owner, context, you know, use the nexus and data. Scope, I want to consider level one and level two impacts. I could say level three and level four, but that's getting too detailed. Time buckets I want you to consider and terminology. I want you to use our company jargon or company abbreviations. So something like that allows us to get back pretty close to the answer we're looking for. Now, it's important to note that even if we do all of that stuff, there's still the need for human intervention. What comes out of that is an interesting analysis that you then need to, and there's a structured way that we take organizations through to do that analysis. And inevitably, I gotta make changes. And so I gotta make tweaks to each of these things, the data set, the nexus, the parameters, the GP2 tool set, and the prompts. Our experience is typically there's about six iterations. Now, the good news is, as I said before, the six iterations might take you 20 minutes, but before it took you know, 20 weeks or, you know, 10 minutes versus 10 weeks, whatever. Hugely faster. Doesn't give you the definitive answer, but gives your team what it needs to work with. So again, I don't want to give away all of the uh, proprietary secret, but you get the idea. There's, um, the, the good news is we've done this with, you know, I guess 50 clients at this point in time. We've got a pretty firm format of how this works and we're happy to take any organization through one or two objectives, see how it works in an organization and that way you can validate how it works and then we can help you expand the model uh, to help your entire uh, retrospective and refresh process, each month's monitoring process, your strategy setting process. Each one of those elements um, is right for performance improvements by using this tool. Thanks for your time.